welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we have my final product review of 2019, and it's a Ryzen processor. That's probably an appropriate way to end the year, really. After all, it's been a year that's been largely dominated by Ryzen processors. Oh, and just quickly, here's my final ad spot of 2019. Today's video is sponsored by PC Case Gear, Australia's premier online PC store. Whenever I'm in the need for a product, they're the first place I turn to, and I've been a customer of theirs for years now, so I really can attest to the quality of their service. I value their broad product range, competitive pricing, customer support, and easy to navigate website. With two decades of experience, I know I can trust PC Case Gear to look after you guys as well as they look after me. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Now, the CPU in question is the Ryzen 5 3500X, and it is an OEM, or System Integrator CPU. I suppose it depends on where you live, really. Initially, it was reported to be an OEM-only product for the Chinese market, but quickly appeared in other regions, uh, such as India, for example, there you could purchase it as a retail product. And yeah, it turns out you can pretty much buy the 3950X anywhere. The conditions, though, do vary from region to region. Oddly in China, it does now appear to be selling as a regular retail product. That means you get a box and a cooler and all that sort of stuff. So a bit surprising that. Locally here in Australia, it can only be purchased in a pre-built PC. So that does make getting your hands on one a little more costly. Apparently, in order to acquire the 3500X from AMD for use in pre-built systems, there are quite a few hoops you have to jump through. Basically, you have to let AMD know your plans, what kind of system you intend to build, and the volume you expect to move. I've also heard they are only sold in large volumes, so like 1000 plus. It's quite strange really, and I find it frustrating how hell-bent AMD is on preventing reviewers from testing the CPU. They're more than happy to put them in hands of customers, but letting them know how the R5-3500X performs relative to, say, the R5-3600 is something they're not that keen on. Anyway, the Ryzen 5 3500X has been available for purchase at AliExpress for over a month now, and the second they were listed, I snapped one up for $224 Australian delivered. It's been sitting on my desk for a few weeks now and I thought I'd better test this thing out or it was just never going to happen. Now, $224, that's about how much I'd pay for a new Ryzen 5 3400G over at PC Case Gear. And for those wondering, the Ryzen 5 3600 comes in at $315. That said, PC Case Gear also lists the Ryzen 5 2600 for just $200. So which one should you buy? Oh, and there's also the Core i5-9400F at $225, and I have to say at that price, it is a rather compelling option, despite the platform's shortcomings. Okay, so let's very quickly go over some of the specs for the 3500X. Like the 3600, it packs half a dozen Zen 2 cores, and they come clocked at 3.6 GHz for the base. Depending on the workload, they can clock as high as 4.1 GHz out of the box, and that's just 100 MHz lower than the 3600. The key difference though is the lack of SMT support for the 3500X, whereas the 3600 packs 6 cores with 12 threads, the 3500X features just 6 cores and 6 threads, much like the Core i5-9400F. So is dropping SMT support for almost a 30% discount when compared to the R5-3600 worth it for Australians? For US-based shoppers, it's just a 20% discount, so I very much doubt it would be worth the saving over there, but in any case, we will know shortly. For testing, we have the usual battery of games and productivity benchmarks. All CPUs have been tested with 16GB of DDR4-3200CL14 memory, and for the graphics card, we're of course using an RTX 2080 Ti to reduce the GPU bottleneck. Then we have the latest Windows, Game, Driver, and BIOS updates available at the time of testing, so everything is up to date. So let's get into the results. First up, we have the Cinebench R20 multi-core results, and here the 3500X doesn't look great. Yes, it's still faster than the Core i5-9400F, but it's slower than even the first-gen Ryzen 5 1600X, and that meant it was 6% slower than the R5-2600 and a whopping 27% slower than the R5-3600. So it looks like for those running core-heavy applications, the 3500X might not be the best fit. Of course, the advantage the 3500X has over the similarly priced first and second gen Ryzen 5 6 core 12 thread processors is the improved single core performance those Zen 2 cores offer. Here it's basically on par with the Core i7-8700K, making it 25% faster than the R5-2600, and even 9% faster than the Core i5-9400F. 
AMD's SMT implementation for first and second gen Ryzen wasn't particularly useful for compression work. And as a result, the 3500X is able to match the 1600 and 2600 series processors. That said, it was 22% slower than the R5 3600, so a reasonably large drop in performance here. However, AMD's SMT technology has always worked very well for decompression work, and here the 3500X gets blown away as it can only compete with the Core i5 processors. This time it was 36% slower than the 3600 and 25% slower than the 2600. As we saw when testing with Cinebench, for those looking for a budget productivity processor, the 3500X just isn't it. This time in the V-Ray benchmark, we see the 3500X was 6% slower than the old Ryzen 5 1600 and almost 20% slower than the R5 2600. So not a great result, even when taking the price into consideration. Things look even worse when running the Corona benchmark, much worse in fact. Here the 3500X is only able to match the Core i5-9400F, which means it's 27% slower than the R5-1600 and 43% slower than the R5-2600. Then when compared to the R5-3600, we're talking about a 60% increase in render time, so not a good option for creators on a budget. And again, we find a similar story when testing with Blender. The 3500X took 14% longer to complete the workload than the first gen Ryzen 5 1600, and that meant it was much slower than the R5 2600 and R5 3600. The removal of SMT support means the 3500X loses quite a bit of its power efficiency. For example, whereas it was 14% slower than the first gen R5 1600, total system draw is just 10% lower. Of course, that figure does include all the system components, but still you'd expect the newer 7 nanometer part to fare much better. Still, I have to admit power consumption is hardly a concern here as 141 watts total system load for a core heavy workload really is nothing. All right, time for some game benchmarks and we'll start things off with Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 1080p using the very high quality settings. And again, I'm using the RTX 2080 Ti for all this testing. Here the 3500X is comparable to the Core i5-9400F, along with the first and second gen Ryzen 5 parts. So that is to say performance is good, but I do get the feeling it won't be long before these 6 threaded processors such as the 3500X and 9400F go the way of the Core i5-7600K. The game does become a little more GPU bound at 1440p and this helps out the 3500X as it's now able to match the Ryzen 5 2600 and really deliver similar performance to that of the R5 3600. That said, performance from the mid-range to top end is pretty similar under these more GPU limited test conditions. Another example where 6 threads and even 8 threads are becoming insufficient can be seen when testing with Battlefield 5. Here the 3500X delivered a similar level of performance to that of the Core i7-7700K and Core i5-9400F. And although the average frame rate looks quite good, it's the 1% low performance that suffers. Granted, the game is still very playable and significantly better than the quad-core 7600K, you will still see noticeably larger frame dips when compared to the 12-threaded and better CPUs. The 1% low performance has improved by 11% with the R5-1600 and 14% for the R5-2600. However, it's the R5-3600 that really steps things up, boosting the 1% low performance by almost 30%. And the situation doesn't really change at 1440p, in fact it just gets worse for the 6-core processor. Here the 3500X still suffers a big dip in 1% low performance, and as a result the R5-1600 was 25% faster, so not a good result for the affordable 3rd gen Ryzen processor. Shadow of the Tomb Raider isn't quite as CPU demanding as the first two titles, and as a result the 3500X performs quite well. It's still only able to match the 2600X and 9400F, but overall, quite a good result really. The margins are similar at 1440p, the 3500X does dip slightly behind the 2600X and 9400F, but overall performance was quite decent. The Ryzen 5 3500X also struggles a bit in the Division 2, delivering poor 1% low performance when compared to even the first gen Ryzen 5 1600. Again, we see that the average frame rate is quite good, but it is the 1% low performance that you should focus on here. Even at 1440p, the 3500X falls behind the R5-1600, albeit by only a few frames, but you wouldn't expect the 6-core Zen 2 processors to fall short of first-gen parts. Far Cry New Dawn is the least CPU demanding game tested so far, so unsurprisingly the 3500X doesn't suffer poor 1% low performance here, in fact it's actually a little bit better than the 3600 in that regard. That said, overall performance was much the same, and not a great deal better 
than the second gen Ryzen parts. It's also a very similar story at 1440p, so at least for the older or less demanding titles, the 6 threaded 3500X will be perfectly fine, though no surprises there. Hitman 2 played well on the 3500X, certainly well enough, despite the 1% lows taking a bigger hit than what you'll experience on a modern 8 and 12 threaded processor. Performance overall was comparable to the Ryzen 5 2600, at least when testing at 1080p. Here we see even at 1440p the weaker than expected 1% low performance does persist, and although the average frame rates are similar to the second gen 2600 and 2600X, the minimum frame rates are much lower. Finally, we have Total War Three Kingdoms, and here the 3500X is comparable to the first gen Ryzen 5 1600X, and that meant the 3600 was quite a bit faster, again when looking at the 1% low figures. Here the 3600 was almost 40% faster, which is a massive performance uplift thanks to the inclusion of SMT technology. That said, once we move to 1440p, all margins are nullified, and here the 3500X performs much like any other CPU in our chart. Really, it's just the R5 1600 that falls a little off the pace here. So, that's all the blue bar graphs I have for you. Now it's time to decide whether the Ryzen 5 3500X is worth buying, should you come across it. For those of you buying today, the best price I've found online is $155 US, and as I said earlier, that makes it about 20% cheaper than the R5 3600, or for fellow Aussies, it's about 30% cheaper. Depending on pricing in your region for the first, and in particular the second gen Ryzen parts, the 3500X may or may not be worth it. For US based shoppers, the Ryzen 5 2600 can be had for just $120 right now, and frankly at that price it's just a much better deal. And really, that's regardless of what you plan on doing with the system. For productivity tasks, the R5 2600 is clearly the better choice, as it was faster than the 3500X in every single core heavy workload we ran. So couple the better performance with the lower price and you have an obvious winner. The second gen Ryzen 5 part is also cheaper here in Australia. So again, I wouldn't bother with the 3500X in the land down under. In the absence of any first and second gen Ryzen parts with more threads, is the 3500X worth buying? If mostly gaming, I'd again recommend the Core i5-9400F. For productivity, you really could go either way. Typically the Ryzen 5 processor was a little bit faster, especially for those core heavy workloads, but generally there really wasn't much in it. Given the warranty issues you may run into with the 3500X should anything go wrong, then I feel the Core i5-9400F is probably the better choice at $150 US, but as a six core, six thread processor, the 9400F probably isn't the wisest investment either. So yeah, if you don't have access to those cheaper first and second gen Ryzen processors, it's probably worth coughing up the extra $50 for the Ryzen 5 3600. It is a cracking good CPU for the money and will no doubt hold up well for years to come. And that is gonna do it for this one. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to get more involved with the Hard Run Box channel and become part of our community, then jump over to our Patreon page, links in the video description get access to our monthly live stream, which will be happening in the next few days for this month, so last one of the year. And we also do Q and A's, we have our Discord server, so you can jump on there and chat to us and the rest of the community. Heap of cool stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.